Now here I am in a little meadow nested in a forest preserve uh, in the greater Chicago area. And a lot of people just probably pass by this and it's a bunch of just uh, green bullshit to them. And I can't, you know, I can't really argue with that because I, I ignore most, uh, you know, elements of human infrastructure because I find it utterly revolting. You know, the, the gas stations, the fast food chains, the walled tract housing, uh, you know, the freeway overpasses, etc. It's all, it's all pretty, uh, it's just a bunch of garbage to me normally. And the tragic thing is, is that, you know, many people uh, pass by this stuff every day without really taking a deeper look at it, without knowing what's around. You know, you just, you go to work, you work your shit job that it is at most minimally satisfying. And then uh, you retire after putting 30 years in the whole time accumulating debt that you can't pay off, thus further necessitating your adherence to a strict regime of, uh, you know, uh, working a job you don't like just to pay off all those bills and then by the time you retire uh, you're too old and uh, decrepit to really enjoy your time off anyway so the whole thing's just kind of a trap and a, a, a shit show but uh, you know it's it's easy living that way to ignore things uh, like this this uh, vernonia fasciculata a member of the asteraceae it's it's a very beautiful plant and it's obviously a, a hit today it's a banger job with those butterflies you could just see their don't know if those are skippers or what. I'm not much of a lepidoptera guy. But, I mean, I appreciate them. I just don't know about them. But uh, you can see they're just really going to town on this. And, again, uh, this is a member of the Asteraceae. And one, one look at those, uh, those capitulas, those individual flowers, will just give you a good idea of what you're working with there. Look at those very elongated corollas. You see that? And look at, look at those lobes, okay? Now, the lobes are just the little pieces of the corolla that are sticking out. You got that floral tube, and then you got those what look like little teeth on the ends of it. Those are the lobes. And then you can see the prominent styles. The lobes on these, uh, of course, are very elongated, very prominent. They stick out than most, uh, most of the lobes on the corollas that are the Asteraceae. Very uh, lanceolate leaves. You know, and for some reason, there's only one of these growing here. Probably because the ecology and the the area is so thoroughly destroyed by a <laughs> by land, you know, bad land management and uh, invasive species and just general uh, ecological neglect. But uh, I am grateful that there's at least one going off here, and uh, you know, we'll just see what else we can find. It's uh, pretty interesting, you know. You're just seeing a remnant of the the larger picture of what was here, you know, two three hundred years ago. Oh, look at that little bee. It's one of the native the native little. Uh, bees no nobody ever gives a shit about those guys they just care about the honeybees you know which i don't really care for too much honeybees are invasive anyway i don't really give a shit about them you know they say if they wipe out the honeybees things might collapse you know that might be good for us i don't know is that just a misanthropist in the in me talking huh anyway vernonia fasciculata yeah what the shit so it's friday at 5 p.m everybody's just you know going home you know, just traveling south on South Ashland Avenue. Look, there's the CTA. <clears throat> you know, not really paying attention to what this shit's going on, you know. But uh, here you got Helianthus molus. And look at these goddamn leaves. Well, first off, you can tell it's a, it's an aster. Look at those, look at those phyleries. Those little bracts, spiky bracts. Okay, and there's a series of them. So you know that's going to be a capitula. You know it's going to be in the sunflower family. They said involucre, that nice involucre, which is composed of phyleries. And then, uh, but look at those leaves. They're, uh, they're almost perfoliate, not really, you know. Perfoliate just means the stem pops through the leaf, or it looks like the stem pops through the leaf. But I guess you would call these sessile. That is, they're just lacking uh, any kind of petiole whatsoever. The petiole's just the shit that holds the, uh, the leaf to the stock, to the main shoot. But uh, it's still a little early here. All right, I'm going to go see if I can pick up some ticks. Oh, wait, you know what? No, no, I'm not. Here's the Delea candida. This is a nice one, Fabaceae. It's a bunch, so it's the pea family, but it's a bunch of tiny pea family flowers all composed in the one big goddamn uh, compound inflorescence right there. You know, what gives it away is the pea family. Is is not so much the flowers, because you got to get up there with a lens or some shit to see them. To see those bilaterally symmetrical individual corollas. Which, what really gives it away is, you know, and you don't normally want to do this with, with plants. You don't normally want to use leaves to identify plants. But you look at those leaves, they've just got the typical, uh, well, first off, pinnate. Uh, they're just a pinnate pea family uh, 
structure thing going on. You know, they, I don't know what the, what do you, they look like pea leaves for Christ's sakes. You just, Jesus, you know, that's some nice rare to beetle. All that stuff over there is a rattlesnake plantain, which is a, you know, kind of a silly name for this plant in the carrot family, but uh, I guess it gets the job done, you know, till you uh, learn eryngium. So, uh, eryngium yuccafolium, just meaning it's got leaves that look like a yucca. Oh, this is a, this is my fucking favorite right here. These baptizias, baptizias, another pea family. A lot of you look. See, it's already got the little, the little pea pods on there. The little, the little bean-shaped pea pods. And again, it's got trifoliate the leaf thing going on. You know, kind of, kind, kind of similar almost to a. Well, not to a lupin. Lupins have palmate leaves, but you know, there was a, I guess, to pea leaves. There we go. There we go again. But look at it. Look at a yucca. The, the uh, not the yucca. Sorry, <laughs> the eryngium yucca folium. It looks like a goddamn yucca. You wouldn't know it. You know what? You would never notice it was in the goddamn carrot family. God, these are fucking weird. I've seen some of these in uh, the volcanoes down in the Trans Mexican Volcanic Belt in the states of Mexico and the state of Michoacan, and they they look like fucking. I seen one on Navarro de Toluca. They look like a damn. It looked like a shit you not like an agave. Like it was very stiff, hard, uh, just basil rosette of uh, very sharp, pointy leaves, you know? I mean, it was, it, I couldn't think of a better way to discourage herbivory than if it was, you know, oozing toxic uh, terpenes and shit from its foliage. It was just, it was a very unpleasant thing to brush up against. I got stabbed by it multiple times up in that Pinus harwegii forest. There's a lot of different kinds of eryngium. Some uh, some other species of eryngium get upwards of six fucking feet tall. Six feet tall and six feet around. And then just, you know, look at what's going on with the flowers there. You know? It's it's like a typical, I guess it's not, well, it's not an umbel. You know, most, most of the members of the carrot family are what's called an umbel. Which you can remember because it kind of sounds like umbrella. And an umbel, uh, umbel kind of looks like an umbrella that's been, you know, flipped upside down by the wind or something, you know? You know when it blows up? You know, you get those big thunderstorms, you got the umbrella, and you, then you get a big wind gust and it blows it up. It kind of looks like that. It blows the, the, the fabric upward. Get in there and just... So it's... But, you know, on the eryngiums, it's just this little... perfect uh, cluster. Look at that uh, cylindrical flower arrangement, too. A helical, I guess. So it's just a perfect little cluster of flowers with those big ass stamens. Well, they're not too big, you know, but they're prominent. The big ass stamens sticking out of each individual flower. You really, you really gotta get a hand lens. Maybe I should do that, I don't know. Cause you miss so much, you know? At least I do. Oh yeah, there's that Baptizia alba. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at it. God damn it. The flower's already done. They mature at the bottom first and then proceed up. You can see these are still going. These are already fully formed fruits. They should be ripe soon. These are still ripening. Ovary's been pollinated. Just waiting to mature. Oh, look at those clouds. Isn't that nice? We don't, we don't really get clouds in California in the summer. You know, we certainly don't get any rain to wash the pollution off all the windowsills and cars and, you know, just a nice uh, fine layer of uh, carcinogenic particulate dust and everything. Sunny California. Anyway, uh, anyway, so here's the Baptizia alba. Let's get up close there. Look at these, these banger flowers, all right? You see what's going on? There we go. All right, so look, you got this, you know, typical pea family flower. You got the calyx down there. Up there you got the uh, the banner. And then you got the wings on either side. And the keel, which is deep in there. And then, uh, boom. You, you, remove, you remove all the sexy parts. Well, not the sexy parts, but, you know, the, uh, the, the repressive parts. And just let it out. Full throttle, you know. You got the banner up top. The wings on the side. And then the keel down there. And then, of course, right in there, you got the, uh, the stamens and a pistol. And then that, that orange shoot, of course, is the anthers. That's where the pollen are. 
And then just the branching structure on these bastards is beautiful. I mean, just look at the, you know, nice netted branching style. Very lateral. Pretty gorgeous. And again, those trifoliate leaves. And I got a little bit of a, you know, I think the name, for, I think the common name for this is false indigo or some shit. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really pay attention to common names too much. But if I if I had to guess, I think this is false indigo. Or maybe that's another one. You know what? If I'm wrong, don't correct me because I don't give a shit enough. But uh, but uh, regardless, look at that nice blue color uh, that's coming out on those uh, matured fruits right there. And even on the top of the stem. This is, a, this is another great one. It needs to get planted more, you know? Think of all those depressing parking lots, like the like the parking lot of the Dunkin' Donuts, a couple blocks down. That, that you know, you could put a couple of these in there. <laughs> yeah, fuck me. Yeah, right. They'd never do that. Taste is so lacking these days. Anyway, let's see what else we got over here. These fucking mosquitoes. You know, I don't. <laughs> they're really. They're starting to get to me a little bit. I think I gotta go put a long sleeve shirt on. God, fuck. Anyway, look. Here's Camacrista. Camacrista is another uh, genus in the pea family, the Fabaceae. But this one's in the Sace Alpinoid subfamily, which you should get familiar with, all right? Yeah, I think you got tree families in the uh, the pea family, three different ones, all right? And this is the Sace Alpinoidae, all right? So take a look at it. If I can get this goddamn flower, to, you know, this is, I'm fucking losing my mind. I'm trying to hold the camera. I'm trying to hold the flower. The mosquitoes are biting my ass. You know, it's sweaty as balls, you know? I've really been spoiled. You know, doing desert botany for the past couple years because I'm about to lose my fucking mind. Anyway, get in there and look at it. All right? Look at those fucking stamens. Look at the filaments, the anthers, all that shit. So nice. Okay? You got this. See, you got the typical pea family foliage. The pinnate foliage. Those pinnate leaves, you know? Just like the tamarind and the acacia and a whole bunch of other wonderful shit that's in the Fabaceae. You know, I used to not give a shit about the Fabaceae, but, uh, you know, now I do. I don't know what to tell you. Now I do. I'm pretty, pretty amazed. Hey, this is a fucking tiny one. I've seen these growing on sand prairies a little bit south of here, forming a wonderful little biotic community, which is also the only, well, I think one of the only spots in the region where the hognose snake grows, you know, which is a real weird looking fucking snake. Really beautiful though. You know, I'm surprised there's any fucking reptiles left in the area with the, all the development. I got to stop knocking. Everyone knows, you know, everyone knows the ecology is fucked. I don't need to keep rubbing it in. I'm sorry. You know, I'll be a little, I'll be a little mean. I go, go, go put a shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get up in there. That's nice. Do you like that? Do you like it? Oh, my God. Look at us. Look at us Corollas. And but the important thing to note here is that it's got these opposite leaves, okay? They're opposite each other. Well, basically opposite. Are they opposite? They're mostly opposite, yeah. This one just threw me off. See, it's a little bit off right there. See right there? God, these fucking bugs are really, they're really ruining my time, you know? And I don't want to spray myself with that shit. Anyway, so there you go. They're perfectly opposite there. All right? Got a reddish stem. The leaves are kind of, you know, it kind of feels like a sandpaper. They're kind of rough, you know? Maybe to discourage bison from gnawing on them, you know? Assuming there were still uh, bison here and they weren't all wiped out. You could see those at the middle and tall grass if you want to go down there. But look at his phyleries, too. So this plant, is it's relatively common all over uh, northern Illinois. You know, I don't know about Wisconsin. I don't know about Indiana. I'd assume so. But, uh, you know, some nice phyleries going on. Those spiky breaks. And if you look up close, you can see they're just covered in those tiny, irritating hairs. But they're, they're stiff hairs. They're not friendly hairs. They're stiff. Are they friendly? Yeah, I guess they're a little friendly. Maybe they're a little friendly. I wouldn't want to eat it, though. Jesus Christ, look at it. I wonder if they got glands on there. You know what? I just, I'm fucking, these bugs are really driving me insane. I'm losing my fucking mind. Oh my God! But look at those, look, look at those rays. Look at how very elongate rays. And then, of course, the Corolla where I seen it, where I showed you that beetle doing his perverted thing in there, you know? The lobes on those Corollas aren't too uh, pronounced, you know? They're just kind of tubes. I don't know. Great plant, though. It's a great goddamn plant. Let's see what else we got over here. Another wonderful uh, member of the Asteracea here. Who the fuck is hiding out in there? Is that a beetle? Who's in there? Anyway, this is wild canine is the common name. Parthenium integrifolium. And I think uh, I think it was at one point used uh, in the treatment of malaria over there. You know? That's why they call it the wild canine. But regardless, it's notable 
for just half it. Look, it's just got, look, each flower just has five tiny ligules. Remember, the ligules are the daisy rays. Five tiny ligules. And, uh, you know, there's no rays, just those five tiny cup-shaped ligules, you know, that are equidistant around that uh, pentagon-shaped flower. Then how, how do the fileries look on this? Oh, there's a couple guys hanging out in there. There's a couple of them. How do the fileries look? They're almost not, you can, you can barely see them. You can barely see the involucral breaks. But it's got basal, it, see, it's got the basal leaves, okay, and then it's got the coline leaves too. And then this is some foam from some little bug that's, you know, been fucking around in there. You know, doing what he does, just causing trouble for the plant. You know, so the plant produces this little spit. Actually, I think the bug might produce that spittle. I forget. You got to look that up. You know, I don't know as much about bugs as I should. I think the bug produces the spittle. You know, it's like a form of protection. You know, so other things don't eat it. Or maybe the plant. I don't know. I, don't, I have to fucking look that up. I'm talking on my ass here. But look over here. We got a morphokinescence. Fabaceae. Now, this guy, this guy's going off. Look, he's blooming already. Well, no, I think he's, I think he's done blooming. But this is, yeah, see, there's the flowers, see? Tiny-ass little flowers right there. Tiny little flowers, you know? So it's just a spike of tiny little flowers. Got a couple lateral little spikes, too. But that foliage is just, it's fucking gorgeous, you know? Again, it's pinnate. Oh, these guys are fucking, that guy's an asshole. Invasive species. Somebody will eat them. But look at how, you can see what I call kinescent. Kinescent just means it's got fuzz on it. It's, it's hairy. You know, it's got like a woolly fuzz, which these certainly do. So you got, you got the amorphokinescence, and there's another species that gets a little bit bigger that doesn't have all the hair on it. At least there's another species around here. There's quite a few species in the genus, but uh, you know, around here you got only two or three. There we go. So that's a little bit better. This one's still, this one's still flowering over here, okay? And you could clearly see the stamens with those little anthers poking out, all the orange little dots. You can see the calyx. You know, this guy's still going off. And of course, zoom out, you know, but you got to get up close. You got to really take a look to get up there, you know, and then you can tell what's going on with uh, this illustrious member of uh, Fabaceae, the pea family. God damn, even the calyxes are uh, canescent like that. See, that's a really, that's a real banger right there. Look at that. So you got a purple Corolla with prominently exerted stamens with the little orange anthers on there looking real nice. And then, you know, the, the calyx is goddamn fuzzy, all right? And it's all on a spike like that. See that? With the nice pinnate foliage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you having a nice time there, huh? You just eating that little flower? Is it nice? Do you like it? This is what's called a red... Oh, oh, he's getting ready to spray me with some shit. I think I pissed him off. Is that This is a red uh, milkweed beetle. And they're host specific, I believe, to the genus Asclepius, which this is in Asclepius solivantii. Look at those goddamn hoods. Look at those hoods. And then you got the little white horns poking out. And of course the hoods... If I could hold this still, the wind is blowing it. The hoods completely uh, go around they circumscribe the gynostegium what is that which is that the central floral part and then if you could get up in there let's see if we can get up in there oh yeah there's the real dirty part there's the stigmatic slit which of course uh uh bees are required to in order to uh, effectuate pollination bees stick their leg in that little stigmatic slit and uh you know and they, they got to pull it out and they get that uh pollinia which looks like a boomerang which is just an, it's just an aggregated mass of pollen on either leg of uh, the boomerang, you know, but you get one of those legs of boomerang, one of those uh, legs of the boomerang stuck on your leg if you're a bee, and you take it to another flower, and you just slip it in that uh, little stigmatic slit, you know, which just sounds kind of filthy. Where do the other milkweed bugs go? Oh, they must have jumped off when my dumb ass grabbed it. It's okay. There's more of them. I walked up, and they were banging in there. How's that? Could you imagine if that was your life? You just bang inside flowers all day and then, you know, just roll over and, and eat? <laughs> it's it's pretty, uh, I guess it's kind of ideal, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'll get a little bored. Anyway, look at those recurved. Those are the petals right there. These things, these are the recurved petals. Milkweeds have a very strange goddamn uh, 
thing going on with their flowering and their pollination. They're probably one of the most complex flowers that there is. But you got the petals. Well, first off, you got a, uh, an umbel. Then you got the petals, the hoods, the horns, the gynostegiums in the middle, and you got that stigmatic slit. And then, you know, the stigma, all the sexy parts are fully enclosed. You can't see the sexy parts on a milkweed from, you know, without dissecting it. You know, the stigma, the stigmatic chamber, uh, the stigmas in there, the, the, uh, the uh, pollinia are on either side of that stigmatic set. Everything's closed in there. It's very odd. But, uh, you know, I think they generally always have those opposite leaves like that, the Sylvanthiae, if I'm not fucking that up, and this is the correct species, which I believe it is, uh, has tends to have these prominent red uh, veins in the middle. Just a very leathery, uh, it, you know, it, it, the texture looks inviting, you know, but then, you know, you crack it open, you got those cardiac glycosides in there, which is probably what that beetle was trying to aggregate, you know, uh, concentrate in his tissues the cardiac glycosides which which of course are toxic and will kill you and it's like that milky white latex that the uh, the common name the colloquial name of uh, Asclepius is known for it's a milkweed oh yeah and speaking of opposite leaves here's Tucrium canadense Tucrium is a genus in uh, the mint family Lamiaceae the first time I ever seen a member of this genus well the first time I ever actually paid attention to it and knew what the hell it was was down there in my Baja you know, and it, it's got the same general flower morphology. Those, you got a zygomorphic bilaterally symmetrical corolla, and then that lower lip. See that big ass lip? The labia, that's one of the, the lips on the petals. And on two cream, they tend to be very pronounced, you know, very big, you know. But salvia, you know, sage and oregano and all that shit is the same kind of floral thing going on. Obviously, not with those, uh, you know, highly exerted anthers right there, but uh, it's, you know, opposite leaves. Sometimes you get a square stem, and then, of course, always a bilaterally symmetrical corolla, you know, which means you can cut it one way. It's like a heart, you know. You cut it laterally, it ain't going to fold over. You cut it uh, vertically, it'll fold over real nice. And then, of course, the calyx. Don't forget the calyx, that purple shit. See that purple part? Calyx, corolla, and then a tiny little pedestal, too, right there, which is the, the thing that holds the uh, the calyx in. And then everything, of course, just covered in those trichomes, those hairs, to discourage your bivvy. I didn't smell this. I didn't know if it smells. Most of the shit in this family smells pretty good. I didn't smell this, though. Look at it. Look at it. Arnoglossum plantagenium. Another Asteraceae with those wonderful rubbery leaves and just the weirdest goddamn flowers. Look at it. Look at their phyleries. They barely have any. You know? I mean, it's got like the, a similar morphological structure to, to uh, you know, Lomatium or Simopterus or some shit. Look at that. Very, very strange. Too bad I missed it blooming, you know. But uh, shit happens. I love that plant. It used to be called, uh, I think it was called Cacalia tuberosa for a while. But then they changed the genus to Arnoglossum. I don't know. What's going on? A little tiny. Is that a frog or is that a goddamn? Oh, yeah, it's a little tiny frog. Where'd it go? I don't know. Look at the papus on it, it's so fluffy and shit. Ah! Oh! Those are the dispersal mechanisms for the Akeens. Akeens just the word for a dry seed. And you can more clearly see them in there, at the base of those little fuzz. You know? I don't know why this plant isn't, uh, isn't you know, around more. I guess there's just no habitat because they mow and, uh, you know, the, the entire Midwest area is just kind of a, a lesson in ecological wreckage to begin with. So I guess there's, that's the problem. There's just nowhere for it to grow. There's no suitable habitat, but uh, you know, I'll take a little seed, I'll disperse it around, you know? We'll see what we could do. I love that plant, Arnoglossum. That's the one with these rubbery leaves. See these rubbery goddamn leaves, basil leaves, Arnoglossum plantagenium. And it's got a big, I think it's got a big tuber down there. I think it's got a big root. Oh yeah, look at those pedestals. Look at those pedestals. Look at how, the, god damn, they're, they're, they're kind of stiff, you know? They're kind of stiff, glabrous, bright red. Such a beautiful goddamn plant, that Sullivan the eh? You know, can you believe they got rid of all this stuff to put up uh, check cashing spots and, you know, Payless shoe stores and fast food and parking lots and uh, it's all just, you know, thinking about it just makes me want to die, you know? 
I mean, shit, I love Mariano's too, but I'd rather have this than the Mariano's, you know. Even if they got the little guy playing the piano and shit in there, I don't care. I'll take this over to Mariano's. Nice little flocks too. But look at this over here. You know, speaking of wanting to die, here's a very poisonous plant. <laughs> it's it's in the carrot family. And uh, it's, uh, you know, which is the same family that, uh, you know, when they dosed Socrates with that... Uh, they poisoned hemlock, you know, they made him renounce everything he believed in, and he said, no, fuck you, and they said, okay, drink this. What they had him drink was a relative of this. It was a little bit more toxic than this, but it's a relative of this. This is uh, Secutum, I think it's Secutum, is that right? Secutum maculata. Anyway, what they had Socrates drink was conium. This is Secutum. Carrot family, uh, water hemlock's the common name. Get a good look at it so you don't confuse it with Queen Anne's lace, which is an uh, edible relative, you know? The wild carrot but uh, you know APACA has got a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of members and it's a very successful family you got some really cool genera too Cymopteris, Lamatium uh, you know and they all got remember I was saying about the umbo looks like an umbrella that's been flipped upside down by the storm you know you know well not the rod but like you're holding a rod and then like a big wind gust comes and it blows all that uh, fabric up you know it's happened to me a couple times down there on Cermak Road it's a big pain in the ass that's how you can remember the name of this type of flower. It's called an umble. Actually, this is like a compound umble, it looks like. But uh, regardless, you get the general idea, and then you kind of, of course, you get up in there, and you look, and there's just a bunch of tiny, tiny white flowers. You know? But, uh, yeah, it's pretty poisonous, you know? So if you want to check out, you know? I mean, I don't know. I could think of better ways to go, I guess. But, uh, you know? So you see your dog eating this or something, you know? Get him away. You say, no. Nah. Here's a real nice one, Veronicastrum virginicum in the Plantagenaceae. Look at those, look at the leaves down there too. Pretty, pretty weird thing going on. You know, they can't, do they have a, do they have a petiole, do they not? You know, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, and then it's just, it's just a spike just poking up out above the brush, you know. They tend to like, I think they tend to like wetter areas. I've only seen them in generally wetter prairies. You know, and then you got those white filaments with the uh, little yellow anthers, the brownish anthers on the end, all together composing a stamen. Look at that Corolla shape, though. Real beautiful, real beautiful plant. You know, in Plantagenaceae, it normally has uh, bilaterally symmetrical flowers. God damn, I had no idea there was so much uh, Asclepius diversity in the Midwest. There's a ton of milkweeds out here. I just seen like five species in, in you know, like an 800 square meter area. Anyway, this is Asclepius hertella, you know, and uh, it's again, it's got those little milkweed beetles just hanging out in there, you know. They're eating, they're eating it, you know, not just getting the foliage. See, there's another one, little sly bastard. Look at those, they, man, the pedestals are hairy on it. You can get tons of aphids going to town too, you know, but those guys are done. Are they done flowering or are they just starting? I can't tell. It looks like they're done flowering. Yeah, they're senescing, you know, but this guy's still going off. Real linear leaves, too, real narrow leaves. Elongated and narrow, you know. You could say that it was lanceolate, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you could. Is that lanceolate? I don't know. It's jabby. If it was hard, it'd be jabby. Elongated and narrow. Okay, I got to wrap this shit up. It's getting a little dark down here, you know. Got to go get some deep dish. And I'm going to use a lot of jar in the arrow. You could bet your ass on it. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting one. This is a Mimulus ringens. And it's just, you know, it's interesting for the fact that the, the whole genus Mimulus, is, it's just been a taxonomic clusterfuck. A wonderful woman by the name of Naomi Frog over there in uh, Rancho Santa, Santa Ana Bot Botanic Gardens. She and a couple others wrote a paper in 2012 that redescribed the whole, you know, there used to be a bunch of species in Mimulus. We're talking like five or six dozen. And, you know, she did this paper that pointed out and said, hey, you know what? I'm looking at this a little bit differently. Also, we did some of the, the uh, molecular data, the DNA. It turns out this genus uh, actually in North America only contains two or three species. I believe it's only two. Everything else that was in this genus got thrown in the West Coast genera, Erythranth and Diplacus, which are mostly out West and mostly like very xeric aka dry habitats but uh you know this 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 plant is pretty interesting i, I think they call it the allegheny monkey flower i don't know why and it, you don't need to tell me either i don't really care but regardless uh, uh it's a it's a beautiful flower it's got a long ass 
I didn't realize how long that the little pedestal is. And again, we got we're dealing with that bilateral bilateral uh, symmetry. This is in, I believe, it's in the Lamy Alleys. The family's from Maceae. I believe from Maceae is in the Lamy Alleys, the Salvia Order, not Salvia Femme, but the Salvia Order. And you know, the whole order, Lamy Alleys, has a lot of bilateral symmetry going on. All right, when you got flowers with radial radial symmetry, it's called the, uh, it's called the uh, actinomorphic. Excuse me, sorry, I'm getting fucking knot on by these mosquitoes. They're finally out, and they're here to ruin my my time. You know, uh, so the the. What the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, the bio, you, when you got radial symmetry, it's called actinomorphic. When you got bilateral symmetry, it's called zygomorphic. These are fucking zygomorphic. Uh, mimulus, yeah, like I said, only two species. It's just, uh, they're, you know, they, they almost look like a little snapdragon. You know, get up in there and look at it. What's going on there, huh? You got a little floral guy for the pollinators. Again, very rigid calyx, you know, very keeled and rigid calyx. And, uh, generally glabrous leaves very smooth very smooth leaves you know there might be some tiny hairs on it but uh, not that many that i see well look at that thing that's going on that little perfoliate thing going on oh they're not perfoliate they're just the uh, there's no petiole they're very smooth anyway that's the allegheny monkey flower sun setting on my ace and the mosquitoes are fucking driving me nuts i don't know how you guys do it i'll talk to you later go fuck yourself bye